What's up, everyone? Today, we're going to talk about soothing and particularly the role of soothing in your journey from feeling anxious back to feeling relaxed. And we're going to talk about why soothing is not a good strategy, how it doesn't work, and why it oftentimes makes your anxiety even worse. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is James Traub. I've got an intensive coaching program called The Anxiety Interrupt. And what I do is I help people like you to break free from feelings of anxiety and exhaustion and overwhelm, to reclaim your mental and physical health, and to get back to feeling healthy, feeling confident, and feeling resilient again. So this is going to be a really, really important presentation today because so many people are struggling with anxiety and overwhelm in the world today. And so many people feel like this is a life sentence. They don't see a path out of anxiety and their focus shifts towards coping and just managing all of the uncomfortable feelings that happen in your body and what's happening in your mind. And I'm here to tell you that you don't have to do that. So for many of you, you know, you already know. Anxiety is basically driven by being in a constant fight, flight, stress response. You're feeling worried, you're feeling scared, you're feeling exhausted, totally drained. You're feeling disconnected from the other people in your life, oftentimes because they don't really know what's going on with you and you're putting up a good front and uh, people don't know kind of the dirty little secret about how you're really feeling in your personal life. And your life ends up becoming defined by coping. And there are many, many different ways of coping. And what you're wanting so bad is to get over here to feeling relaxed in your body and your mind again. You want your peace of mind back. You want to feel at ease. You want to feel healthy. You want to feel resilient. You want to feel confident. And you want to be able to authentically connect with the people in your life, your family, your friends, your children, your colleagues, and not be distracted by constant worry and constant feelings of anxiety in your body and your mind. So again, we're going to talk about why soothing, which is so, so popular, is ineffective. And then we're going to talk about what is effective. So the number one mistake is that people start with soothing. And you can see here, there's a three-step process to get you from feeling anxious to feeling relaxed. And soothing is part of that process. But it's really important when it comes in. And what most people do is to start with soothing. And I'm going to use a metaphor and be an amateur artist here to make this point. But imagine for a second that you get placed into a room with a lion. Like, no joke, a big, dangerous, wild lion. And I'm over here, outside of the room. The moment you see this lion, your body goes into a panic mode. Fear overwhelms you. Is there anything in the world that I could shout to you through this wall that would make you feel safe and secure? If I shouted at you, just breathe. Focus on your breath. If I said you should try to meditate or don't think about the lion or just be positive, it'll pass. Distract yourself. Would any of these things that I might shout at you Restore your sense of safety and security. The answer is no, absolutely not. When you're in the room with a threat, your nervous system kicks into your sympathetic state, your logic goes to the background, your emotional reactivity comes to the foreground, and your entire being the way that your brain is actually functioning is focused on survival. It's focused on navigating this situation that you're in and getting away from this threat. So nothing that can really be said, right? No amount of breathing, no amount of stretching, no amount of listening to guided meditations, no amount of going for walks out in nature is going to make that lion go away. None of that's going to make you feel safe being in the room with the lion. 
So step two is actually about removing the lion from your situation. So soothing is about restoring feelings of safety and security. Removing the lion is about decreasing fear. But that's not exactly true. You don't have to remove the lion. If you imagine for a second that this lion magically and suddenly grew to 10 times the size of a normal lion, your feeling of fear would turn into a feeling of doom. Your body would further respond, and rather than having just anxiety or maybe panic, you'd become paralyzed with fear. Likely you wouldn't be able to speak, you wouldn't be able to move, you wouldn't really be able to do anything to save yourself, right? So your fear would turn into doom, right? And your panic or anxiety would turn into paralysis. But on the other hand, if we shrunk this lion to the size of a house cat, It was still a lion, but now it was about this big. Your fear would change. Your fear would get downgraded to something more like concern, where maybe you're now worried about getting hurt, getting some scratches, getting some bites, but you're not worried about dying, right? You're not worried about utter catastrophe. And your experience is going to be different too. You're likely to feel more alert. You're still going to be very focused and very engaged on this situation, but it's not going to dominate you the way that it would if it was a full-sized lion. So what do we learn from this? What we learn from this is that the size of the fear matters. And then we don't actually need to remove the lion. We just need to reduce the size of that lion. And that if we can reduce the size of that lion, if we can reduce the size of this particular fear, that you're going to have a different response to it. And this is really important because when the fear is at the level that it ends up triggering your stress response, you get an influx of stress hormones, you get the adrenaline, you get the noradrenaline, and you get the cortisol. And it's the constant infusion of these stress hormones into your body that are causing all of the discomfort that you're having. When you have that stress response, that's what creates these feelings of panic in your body where you want to get away from yourself and you just feel so uncomfortable and you're crawling in your skin. It's the infusion of these stress hormones on a regular basis that starts to impact how your brain actually functions. It naturally pushes you in the direction of perceiving everything as a threat. So when you're spooked, if you just imagine being out in the forest at night and you're already spooked, Every branch that breaks, you think, is a threat. Every sound that you hear in the distance, you think, is a threat. You're jumpy. And that's the experience that you have when you're anxious. Every little thing seems to be a threat. Loud noises are a threat. New responsibilities are a threat. So we know that step two now is to reduce the size of the lion. Step one is going to be to actually identify what the lion is. Because your stress response is getting activated, but there isn't a big threat in your life right now. There's not a physical threat in your life. Your body is not actually in danger, right? Anxiety and panic oftentimes sweep over us when we're sitting safely on the couch, when we're trying to go to bed, when we're socializing with friends, when nothing seemingly significant or concerning is going on. And so a lot of people, especially with like generalized anxiety, we say, well, I just don't know what's causing my anxiety. It just kind of hits me out of nowhere. And we can talk about that in another video and get into perception versus neuroception. But there are triggers out there that are connected to your fear that are not obvious. Because this fear is oftentimes an unconscious fear And your triggers are connected to this unconscious fear through some sort of a catastrophe story. 
So your triggers connect your catastrophe story, connect to your fear. And so if we think for a moment or look for a moment at common triggers, right? Triggers vary widely between people, but oftentimes things like driving, socializing, work, money, loss, relationships, other forms of stress in your life. All of these can be triggers. And these triggers connect to some sort of a catastrophe story, which then connect to some sort of a fear. And this is the first step in breaking free from anxiety, is not to start with soothing, right? Even though it feels like this is what you need to do to get through your day, and maybe that is what you need to do to get through your day, but don't kid yourself that that's actually gonna help you to get through anxiety. Right, the first step of getting through anxiety is to identify your lions. And the way that we do that is we start to take a look at what's triggering you in your life. And you know what this is, right? You have in your regular heartbeat. You do some sort of lab with your doctor. You get ghosted by a friend. Or maybe your partner's withdrawing from you and you feel some distance in your relationship or there's some money challenges coming. And any time that you try to get close to one of these trigger areas, your body just kind of shuts down. The anxiety starts to well up. The panic might start to set in. There's something going on there. And this is where we start. And this is the very first step. So we can take this trigger and we can start to ask questions like, and if that happens, then what happens? And if that happens, then what happens? And if that happens, then what happens? And so often, you know, driving is one of these things. When people feel anxious, and look, I, I struggled with anxiety for 13 years myself before breaking free, and this was one of the big ones for me, right? It's like the thought of driving, or for me, it was driving with my family long distances would get me really anxious. And why? Well, I'd been dealing with a bunch of brain fog, right? I didn't feel like my speech was as quick as I wanted. Sometimes I wasn't paying attention and I was a little bit clumsy. So the, so the thought would go, oh, can you really drive? You've been a little bit of a space cadet recently. You're a little bit of a space cadet, so maybe your reaction time is not that good. Maybe you're going to be a little bit more of a dangerous driver and put your family at risk. Are you going to be able to respond to something if it happens? And if you start thinking about all of this stuff, are you going to have a panic attack while you're driving on the interstate? And what are you going to do? And then what are people going to think if you get into an accident? What are people going to think if you need to pull over and get out of the car and have a panic attack in front of other people? What are they going to think? Are they going to judge you? And you can kind of see how this goes, right? And you got to push all the way through because we might go through some of these scenarios and with driving, like maybe it ends up with feeling judged, right? Like people are going to feel like we're some sort of a failure or less than, but you got to keep pushing because it goes even deeper than that. If you're a failure, then what does that mean? And what does that mean? And what does that mean? You think that your spouse might judge you and think that you're not a good partner and might pull back in the relationship and might not be interested in you and then might want to break off the relationship. Now your relationship or your marriage falls apart. Then what? Then you're all alone. But then what? Right? You got to push this thing all the way through. And what's so powerful about this is that when you get to this core fear, when you get to this core fear, you're going to realize, number one, that it's been unconscious. You're going to be able to see how your trigger goes all the way through the story and does connect to that fear. And then you ask a question like, when did this type of fear first show up in my life? And almost instantly for most people, they know it was a prior relationship. It was some period of time when I was a teenager. It was something that happened to me as a child. And we see that this fear, this irrational fear has been with us for a really, really, really long time. And we've got very good reasons for wanting to avoid it again. Because if we say, and how did you feel way back then when this thing happened to you? The body tightens up, the stomach clenches, right? You feel that experience again. And this is what's getting triggered when these small, more surface level things are happening in life. So you've got this fear that's attached to the triggers. And when it hits, if your mind goes all the way back to that experience, you end up with a stress response. You get those stress hormones. Now you start feeling anxious. 
you don't really understand why this is happening. So you tell yourself a story about that. And it starts to spiral and it starts to spiral and then it builds up into panic and then you feel absolutely ragged and exhausted again. So I'm going to cut it off here for today because this is a good intro, but there are three core steps to getting out of a fight, flight, anxious state and getting yourself back into a state where the majority of the time your body's normal state is to be relaxed. It's to be parasympathetic right? It's to feel peace of mind, ease, feeling healthy, feeling resilient, like you can handle life's stresses and getting that confidence back. And we'll get to soothing at some point, right? Soothing is necessary. I'll give you another metaphor. Think a lot about turbulence on a plane, right? This would be the trigger, would be turbulence. For most of us who don't fly all that often, if there's a big jolt of turbulence, <laughs> You feel that stress response immediately. You're grabbing those armrests. You're sitting back in the chair. Your heart starts thumping, right? You feel a little bit lightheaded. And why? Why? It's that response, right? You have this association with turbulence that the plane's going to crash. It's going to fall out of the sky. It's going to hit the ground, big, big fireball, and everyone's going to die, right? So it's not actually the turbulence. It's what you associate with the turbulence. It's where your mind goes when you experience that trigger, that turbulence that ends up activating your stress response. And you sit there in your seat and you feel terrible. And especially if the turbulence lasts for a while and you get dose after dose after dose of these stress hormones, you feel ragged. Even when the plane is smooth sailing and you're through the turbulence, you're utterly exhausted sometimes for hours afterwards. And some people can't even relax until they get off the plane right? That's where soothing comes in. Once the fear is gone, then we can start to soothe. And it's interesting because flight attendants and captains and people that fly all the time, they don't respond the same way to turbulence. When that jolt of turbulence hits, their nervous systems don't go into overdrive. They have a different association with turbulence. They know how strong the plane is. They've seen this happen before. They know that turbulence doesn't mean that the plane's going to fall out of the sky and everyone's going to die. So their brain doesn't go there and they have a totally different experience. And this is part of what we work in when we work together to break free of anxiety and break free of these feelings of overwhelm is we start to decrease the fear that you have. And oftentimes a lot of that fear is emotional fear. It's irrational fear. And if we put it down and we talk about it, we can mitigate that fear a little bit. And when we do it enough, then you stop experiencing the panic and the anxiety and you get down to feeling more alert and more concern. It's still there with you, right? There's still work to be done. That's where soothing is really, really effective. But you're not getting that stress response all the time, which is what's really jacking up your mind and your body. So... If you're interested in taking this first step, this is something that you can work on on your own. And I encourage you to work through this on your own. If you go to anxietyinterrupt.com, you can download a free workbook that provides a little bit of this background and then has questions and step-by-step -step instructions for walking yourself through this process of picking one of your triggers and working it back to a fear and then answering some other questions to see exactly why this is triggering you emotionally. And this is a powerful step too, because it helps you to understand like what's really going on with anxiety so that you can get a sense of like what's going on in your body and mind and see anxiety as a thing other than you, which helps. You don't feel so much like I'm a failure. I'm less than, I can't cope. You know, I'm just not as good as all of these other people. I crumble under pressure. When you see how all of this stuff is connected, not only does it give you a roadmap for getting out of anxiety, but it helps to depersonalize it too. And there's tremendous relief just in that. So again, if you're interested in downloading that free workbook, just go to anxietyinterrupt.com. And thank you for your attention today. I look forward to doing another video soon. See ya.